in this brief section, we'll talk about three different aspects of spatial st statistics. First of all, one of the most important concepts that guides much of the thinking about spatial analysis and the application of spatial statistics is spatial probability. The reality is that we will never fully understand every single detail of what happens on the Earth's surface. And so we need to be able to analyze places and analyze problems in terms of probabilities. In other words, we're trying to analyze the likelihood of a certain scenario happening in a certain place. We use this to do predictive modeling. We use it to better understand what's happening from place to place. We can use it whether we're talking about physical processes like the chances of a flood, mapping out 100-year flood areas, for example, or we're talking about probabilities that relate to human behavior such as predictive crime mapping, economic patterns, and so on. So maps will consider the probability of isolated events or the probability of more than one event. And so we can look at ways to apply statistics to this concept by asking the question, what is the likelihood that the scenario will be the same in every place every time? So for example, here, we would look at probability by, based on certain conditions and map it out over space. So that in map A, for example, we see a probability risk map that shows us a, rate, a rating scale and areas of high versus low probability. And then in map B, we see areas of well sampling and conditions. And so you can then interpolate over space, that is estimate over space, the likelihood that certain conditions will yield certain results. One of our other issues is the reality of uncertainty. Any geographic data set is a representation of reality. Again, you know, we're, we're dealing with modeling reality. It's a simplification of reality. Inevitably, we're going to have some uncertainty over the nature of the real world that's being represented. And so one of the things that we look at is the, the role of uncertainty in mapping because it's important for interpretation and understanding of the kinds of conclusions we can draw from maps. And statistics helps us deal with that by telling us what the confidence is that we can have in certain kinds of results. So are all sources as reliable as others? And can all source information be verified as well as others? And the reality is that this varies tremendously among different data sets. And again, it's important to go back to the concept of data and think about your metadata and, and how data are created and collected and so on. We'll talk about that in another lecture section. So having this awareness that analysis results in uncertainty. Uncertainty means that we, we need to come to terms with it right up front so that we don't make bad mistakes when we analyze results. We'll see some examples of that as you go through your labs. Then the concept of spatial inference. So statistical inference in spatial analysis is one of the most important tools that we have, which is a practice of reasoning from the analysis of samples to conclusions about the larger populations. There are various tests that we can do to look at measures of association, such as the chi-squared test, the t-test, and so on. It is generally accepted that any result obtained from an experiment through the analysis of sa a, sampled, a sample of measurements or responses to a survey will be subjected to a significance test to determine what conclusions can reasonably, reasonably be drawn about the larger world that is represented by the measurements or responses. So we don't necessarily count and enumerate the entire population all the time. What we do is we sample it and we make inferences about that. We use statistics to help us understand the value of our results and the kinds of conclusions that we can draw from that analysis. So how can sampling provide an indication about a larger population? What, what are the signs of future patterns and growth when you look at population trends? and the trends and representation of a sample for the entire population as a whole. 
Okay, and that concludes this brief section on statistics. We'll talk much more about this as the semester goes along and you'll get the opportunity as you start to do analysis to uh, look much more in detail at the use of spatial statistics.